Hello, and welcome back to the Talk of Fame podcast with your host, Kai Martini. On this episode, it's very exciting because the author of Your Life is Your Movie, The Biggest Obstacle You Ever Have to Overcome is Your Mind. Actor that has played roles in films and shows such as Nightmare Neighborhood Moms, Chicago PD, and Metlock, and founder of the Indie Actor Studio, and earned a business of top fortune 5,500 and 2,000 organizations such as Southwest Airlines, FedEx, and two in, in Mary Prize Financial by Development and Recruitment Strategies and positioning these brands to acquire career talent across the global. Jonathan Gorman, thank you so much for coming on, Jonathan. It's such an honor to have you. Well, thanks for having me, Kylie. I appreciate it. You know, Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it today. Thank you so much. So in your book, you said our beliefs can make us or destroy us when I understand how to align our conscious and subconscious state of mind. Our creative magic is possible. A masterpiece is merely a mistake, which is in the beginning of the book that you wrote, um, which I connected with so much as a person. And like, I wanted to ask you, like, how do you realign a conscious and self-conscious mind to get creative magic? Yeah, so that's a good question. And and one of the biggest pieces that most people will make the mistake on is not actually, one, doing the work. I know that sounds really amazing, you know, like you have to do the work. The biggest misnomer in that is it doesn't always have to be hard work. It just has to be focused work. Mm-hmm. And, and doing the work is because it's a lot of curiosity. Mm-hmm. That's probably the first word that comes into play and exploration. And the reason is, is simply because we are, when we're conceived, we live through such an uh, unconscious state of mind for the beginning part of our whole life. But we're learning, right? So we're getting mm-hmm. tons of information. So that's because it's not conscious. That's now information of what we think is truth. So until we, so when we become conscious in our state of mind, do we agree with the information that we've learned? And if those two pieces aren't aligned, it really starts to skew how do we actually interact with the world based on what do we want and what do we actually believe that we can actually get? So in order for us to first understand, you know, those two conscious states of mind, we have to put in that work to understand what do I really want? Mm -hmm. And then it's not just taking a guess. It's being able to say, why do I want that? And continuing to ask why so that you're fully motivated and understand, okay, this inspires me. Because once you're under, once you're inspired, now, you know, this is what you want. And it starts to align the two, the two conscious states of mind, the subconscious and the conscious state of mind. Mm -hmm. And like with inspiration, like with subconscious and conscious, like there are two different things. Like you're not the same thing. And with inspiration, like your mind controls what you do. Like your your mind basically controls what you say and basically what you do in life. Because your mind plays a vital role in basically how you live. It's a big role. And basically with inspiration, like it's just like, when you find inspiration, whether it's like on television or from your family or friends or what you see, it just it just plays a big vital role in this kind of how you live life and what you do. Exactly. Exactly. And the biggest thing is, is that when we start to do things in our life for other people that actually we don't want to do or we don't question why we do it, then we we go down a road that doesn't allow us to feel inspired right Mm -hmm. so when we when we become uninspired the world thinks we need to be motivated well the problem is is that nobody can help you get motivated Mm -hmm. you can be motivated but the only way you can be motivated is to align exactly what you want to do so that's the biggest catch is that making sure especially at your age and you're you know young people today is to be able to say okay what do i want to do and question question as much as possible, go explore different things to see what you liked about it. What gave you hesitation to want to try something? Think through that hesitation because maybe there's a reason that says, well, I don't really like doing that. Then don't continue to go down the road to doing something that you don't really necessarily want to do just to fit in. That will, that will lead you down the world of not living to your purpose versus living to your purpose. Mm -hmm. And like, as the name of your book is your life is your movie the biggest obstacle you ever have to come is your mind like why is like the biggest obstacle our mind like why i know we kind of cut kind of catch on this a bit a couple minutes ago but like our mind is kind of like our biggest obstacle like we said like 
in what we do each day. But like, why is the biggest obstacle our mind in the first place? Well, because the biggest piece is, as you were, as you were saying, you have your subconscious and your conscious. So 95% of what we do is subconscious. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's instilled behavior that we're not even in any form conscious of. Now we're only operating on 5% conscious state of mind. So if you think about that in the 5% of your day, if you're only acting on what you are conscious of at that point, that's not a lot of your day right? Mm -hmm. So fully aligning the two becomes very, very important. And that's why your biggest obstacle is, is because the, the mind and the brain is like a, a computer. Now, in, your, in this day and age, everybody has, a, an, everybody has an iPhone, right? Or everybody mm -hmm. has a computer. And you think about that, there's inside of a computer, there's all types of information inside of that, syst uh, that system, right? There's a hard drive. The same thing with your, when you buy a phone, there's all these predetermined applications that you can use. But how often do you actually use all of those applications? Mm -hmm. Not very much, right? Yeah. But they're instilled. So there's this excess level of information in the system that you don't actually need. So if you think about it, when you start to put your phone together, do you not put your apps into areas of favorites and mm -hmm. how you use the phone well it's the same thing why not do the exact same thing with your life make sure all the applications that you want in your life the things you want to do are put up in the forefront that you're actually using those and applying and get rid of the others you don't need them why have them actually in the phone itself that's mm -hmm. just stored information that you don't need mm -hmm. you're exactly right because like with social media and like with technology like it just plays like a vital role like in every person's life i know technology just came a thing like years ago it became a big thing especially during the pandemic everyone's on their phones whether it's on tiktok instagram or whatever big app there is everyone's always organizing their apps and always doing these things but like why can't they put like organizing their phones and their apps into like our lives because sometimes you're like i'd rather organize my life on my phone but then like you're like why can I organize it on a paper and rather than spend hours daily organizing my phone and be on social media? This social media can make um a big toll because especially with mental health and the way you do things, it can be um mentally basically draining in how we kind of do things in life each day, whether it's like going out with friends. I know that's a big role is like sometimes they're like rather be on their phones than with social interaction rather than have a face-to-face -face conversation. And rather kind of have a kind of better life without a cell phone. Like with like my my parents' generation, like they didn't grow up with phones. They didn't right. grow up with technology. But then like with me, like my generation, it's just like our world is our technology, whether it's our phone, computer, like even with school, like a lot of people are doing school online is during the pandemic and like that's like, even with technology, it will affect our minds. It will affect how we kind of do things and the way we kind of go to bed each night. It's obviously, with being on our phones so much, it can affect the way we kind of sleep and do all these things. So it's like the technology just kind of plays a big role in how we do things and the way kind of we do each day. And, you know, in this world of Marvel or comics or superpower, right, or superheroes, Think about it this way, that the mind is getting so much information. It's getting 40 million bits of information per minute, mm -hmm. 40 million bits of information. That means everything we're based on frequencies. So our brain is taking in way more information than we can consciously absorb. So the key is, is if it's absorbing information and it's throwing out information that we don't believe is good for us or accurate. But if we were if we're hardwired before we come to a conscious state of mind, what happens if we're accepting information that we actually don't want? Mm -hmm. So now you have all this information continuing to harden your even more inside of your brain and make it it make it make you more rigid to explore, be childlike. So as you get older in life, you'll see that a lot of people lose that childhood uh, personality, that exploration, that curiosity. They start to fall, they fall into a mundane and that's just the way of behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Not something we have to accept. It's just something that people begin to fall into because of the habit, the conditioning and the mind is conditioned. So mm -hmm. unless you condition your mind, 
into the way that you want it to function in your most optimal level, it will only do what it's a, what it's been told in its subconscious form. Mm -hmm. And like, why is it like important to overcome your mind? Like, as to kind of go back a little bit, like with our mind, it controls what we do in every single day of life. But like, why is it mostly important to overcome your mind in the first place and what we do? I'll give you probably one of the biggest ones that makes the biggest impact. And I'll, and I'll correlate it to when I, when I had my acting studio and students would come in. Fair? Because that will give it back to the world. So they would walk in because why? They wanted to become an actor. Right? That was the goal. The problem is they wanted... That's the first word. Now, there's two other components to that. There's the can, can they, and will they? So the will and the want don't always align. Think of the fact that you envision, I want to become an actor. I want to become this person in my life. So you envision that. I want to have this kind of home. I want to have this kind of friendships, this kind of family. I en You envision that, right? Mm -hmm. you about it it's in your brain of what you would like that perfect place to be in that world the problem is is that you may not actually believe you can have it yeah so now what ends up happening is that's where you start to limit yourself you want it but you don't believe you can actually have it mm -hmm. so now you have to go back in and deprogram the reason what's limiting you to believe that you can't have it. Mm -hmm. You can have anything. We create everything in our world. We create what we like, what we don't like, because we're it's our mind. Mm -hmm. Our visualization is our interpretation. Do we like somebody? Do we like what somebody does or doesn't do? That's what we create when you really break down the simplicity. So if your mind is controlling all of your behaviors with ways that aren't aligned for you to believe that you can have it you'll always want it but you'll never have the will to achieve it mm -hmm. because like with our mind like it controls what we do and what we not do because Correct. obviously like when we see people doing all these things like oh this person got to work with this a-list actor or like this person got this role or doing these things like like sometimes our mind they kind of gets our jealousy and like why can't i do that you know i mean it's just Correct. like with our mind, it really shows us what our personality is and what it isn't. With our mind, it really kind of shows, like, how should I overcome this obstacle? Whether it's, like, anxiety, depression, or whatever, you think in, whatever it is you're going through, it really kind of shows, like, when we see other people doing it, like, sometimes we're like, what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I do that as well? But then, like, it's just, like, how can I really overcome it? It's like when we see people do all these things, they're like, why can't I just be happy for that? Why, why am I being so kind of jealous of what they're doing? If I want, if I'm jealous of that, like, why can't I do it as well? You know, I mean, what's right. like, if I'm jealous, I transition it to be like, I'm happy for this person. I might not know them, but I'm happy for them rather than like have positive attitude rather than be jealous of that person for getting this thing that, that they got. And that, and that's just it. And that's the, understanding that if you, if you feel for somebody that they're doing something successful and that bothers you, then your perspective or your angle of your kaleidoscope, think of your, all your different perspectives that you have is off kilter. Why? And that's where you have to come back to yourself and you have to say, well, what is it that's making me not happy for that person? Mm -hmm. And once you under, and that's where I say that work that we talk about and understanding and asking the why, why do I feel that way? Actually write it out. Ask yourself, really uncover the truth. And that's where most people go, well, I don't want to deal with it. So they don't really want to, they don't address it internally, why it's affecting them the way it is. And it continues to build up on them. And the next thing you know, that's when you have depression, anxiety, anxiety. Because you've just let these building blocks stagger on top of each other without understanding, you know, well, why do I feel this way? Do I have to feel this way? What can I do that will make me happy for this particular person? Or what can I do that will make me happy in my life? Mm -hmm. It's like, I know like, a lot of people like to take people's successes to like make it 
kind of a big deal than it already is. I know like a lot of people like to overreact about some things or worry about things that they shouldn't worry about. But then it's just like, it's okay to overreact about some things, but sometimes you're like, you have to realize that like, even though when someone gets to success, it does not affect you at all. Even though your mind thinks like, oh, this affects you, you should overreact about this. And that's just our mind like making tell you like it's just like your anxiety controlling your mind. And that's right. why sometimes I have to realize like be living with anxiety myself, like sometimes with living in anxiety, your mind overreacts and you're having anxiety for no reason. But then like you have to tell yourself, like, calm down. Like this is your anxiety <laughs> living in your mind that right. you can't control. But sometimes when your anxiety, you can't control it. It just comes out of nowhere. But then you're like you have to realize like girl it's your mind this is let it go but then like this exactly is like, sometimes it's just our mind that, that that plays a vital role like anxiety and like overcoming things that you really don't know what to do about it and 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 enjoy the process of the journey except where you are right where, where one of the biggest things that most people make a mistake in life is this they think that there's a short-term end goal but let me ask you if you want to be healthy do you want to be healthy your whole life or just a part of your life? Mm -hmm. If you want to have security in your life, let's say financial security, do you want to have it just part of your life or all of your life? Mm -hmm. All of your life. If you want a good relationship with your friends and your family, significant others, do you want it for just a short term or do you want it for a long term? All of these are like long term, really. At the end of the day, there is no short point. There's no, there's no end point. The end point is when we no longer live. Right. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we have to align and realize it's not every our journey is constantly exploring and learning and applying and realizing we don't have to have things happen today or tomorrow. They're just constant baby steps that when you look back in the rearview mirror, you're like, oh, my gosh, look how far I came over the course of time. But even when you're 50, 60, 70 years old, you're still exploring, mm -hmm. learning. And enjoying the journey. Mm -hmm. It's when we start to put all these perimeters onto our life, we start to say, oh, I have to become this person at this point. I have to achieve this at this point. We start putting perimeters on all those. Those are they are good to have goals, but you don't want to make them become so concrete because life will come at you. And if you don't enjoy that journey, then it becomes hard. That's the, that, that's that, that perspective. It's hard. Make life fun. Mm -hmm. there's nothing stopping you from making it fun mm -hmm. you're exactly right and like how long like this goes back to like your book but like how long did it take for you to write it like was it kind of like a couple year thing or was it kind of like a like a short process this was almost a decade long in the actual writing process oh, wow. itself and the education has been over two decades long in in doing it um when i first started to uncover like what made me change and do something go after something and not go after something that was about almost uh 17 18 years old and i was not doing well in school i was doing horrible in school and then i found out that i was going to get kicked out of school because i was doing so bad and at that moment i didn't want to be kicked out of school and so i said well i want what do i have to do and that was the first time that i actually took control because i truly wanted something for me and I, and I achieved something that seemed impossible. So in doing that, I realized at that moment, wow, I can do anything that I really want to do. And so I started to explore that. Well, why do I not feel that I can achieve certain things? And I started taking courses and understanding how the mind works. How do we start to limit ourselves? Why do we limit ourselves? And just started studying all that. And then in making movies, I realized one day I was like, well, when we make a movie, all of these little components work together and they're the same things that we could be doing in our life, right? Mm -hmm. We could say, okay, we have to, we want to write a script. We want to, we have to know in a very concise way, what is it going to be about? So in our life, if we want to become something, well, what do we want it to be? So we have to write it out in a couple of lines. It shouldn't be hard and difficult. So I just started correlating all of these together saying, oh, well, if you made the movie of your life of what you want and yet will have multiple movies in your life 
how could that give you a roadmap into doing the things that you want to do? Mm -hmm. Because like when you write a book, like you have to write it to know what what the ending is going to be about. Like you can't write a book until you don't know what it's going to end like. You know what I mean? It's just like when you write a book, it's just say about your life or your friend's life, your family's life or whatever it is. Like it's a journey. It does not happen overnight, right? The thing is finishing a book does not happen overnight. If it does, it's probably not the best. Like honestly, right, but right. like even if it takes months or years, I am in the process of writing something right now. That's like I've been doing it for a year. I'm like kind of lazy in writing, and that's kind of how like life goes. Like sometimes you want to write something, but you get lazy. But right. sometimes, like if you are writing about something that is important to you, whether it's like acting or finance or whatever you decide to write about, it's just like it's a big process. Whether it's like there's a lot of life things that you do that does take time for what you want to do whether it's like when you're failing in school like you said like you sometimes have to realize like oh how can I not fail in school like these schools are, of course everyone's top priority when you're in your teenage years or if it's high school college or elementary school it's not like I'm only 16 I'm a sophomore right now but it's like sometimes you have to realize like I'm a sophomore in high school. I have two years of high school. Left. I'm going to college in two, three years. Like, what do I want to do in life as an example? Like, what do I want to do after college? Like, what do I want to like major in? Or what do I where do I see myself in five years? So it's like that's like a whole process in self mind of what we want to do. But sometimes people are like, what do I have? I'm only 16 years old. Like, what I have no idea what I'm gonna do. But it's like some people do not know what they want to do when they're in college. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's just our mind really controlling with what we actually want to do with ourselves. Because it's okay if you don't know what you want to do. Sometimes, and sometimes I think, like, what do I want to do? Like, as an example, but it's like, everyone does not know what they want to do in life yeah. at some point. I'll give you a really good example for young people, because this is interesting. If you look at making a movie and you look at saying, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to college. So let's just say that movie is about, I'm in high school and I'm thinking of going to college, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing is, you know, you want to go to college. So you want to think about that, but you don't, in a, in a movie, you have an idea. You may need a screenplay or you may need a screenwriter. Then once you have the actual script done, you need a producer, somebody who actually believes in the project that will help you get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Well, couldn't you, if you're the actual, if you come up to the concept and say, I'm thinking of going to these particular places, when you talk to your counselor or you talk to people at certain colleges, they kind of help you. They're like your screenwriter. They start to tell you why this place would be good and the advantages of it. The producer in your life could be your parents. Mm -hmm. They could be the ones that believe in you so much. They want you to succeed just like the person who's got this screenplay they love your screenplay they want to make it get to the point now they got to now you got to find a financer who's going to be the financer of your movie well that may be your parents that may be scholarships that may be different things so you're going to have to finance a movie when you make a movie well you got to finance how you're going to go to college so when you start to look at all of that who is who are they going to be the friends and the network that are going to help you on your journey there well how are you going to cast your film so they all correlate to making a movie so when you think of anything you want to do in your life, there's all these things and facets that you use in collaboration that you bring together that help you achieve to getting what you want to bring to, to fruition. And that's the biggest thing is realizing you don't have to do anything yourself. Mm -hmm. The greatest things in life are the collaboration of many who are aligned to the same vision with you to go where you want to go. And you're aligned to other people's visions too. Mm -hmm. And like, you have earned a business of top fortune 5,500 just organizations such as FedEx, Southwest uh, Airlines, and much more. But develop new recruitment strategies and positioning these brands in choir, your talent across the globe. Like, how do you like approach these brands with talent and strategies? So a lot of them, so my, that's my, my business now in the sense that I do consulting. So in doing consulting, the biggest thing is there's so many different ways that people can approach things. But the biggest problem, just like in life, is a lot of times it's risk mitigation. People are uh, afraid to go outside of the box or look at all the possibilities that are available. Only a very small percentage of businesses will do that. 
So many times I want to break down the process with them to ask the questions back into why do you do what you do and make sure it's aligned to exactly what you really want to do. And so that's really when that we get back into whiteboarding and say the exploration of understanding the end result and how do we get there by re-engineering it. And that's the same thing what we want to do in life. We want to look at the whiteboard and kind of imagine what it is we want to achieve. Why do we want to get there? What happens when we get there, right? Mm -hmm. And what do we do next? So that that way your roadmap is extremely long and you have a you have a greater way to go achieve what you're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And like you were recently cast in a lead role for a lifetime television movie, Nightmare Neighborhood Moms, that, would, that released in April of 2022. Like, what would you say is a moment that defines the film for you? Well, I think the first one is, is the beginning when I get the script before I even get the role. You mm. know, the first piece that I look at is, does it resonate with me? And and as we get in, and that's, a, that's an interesting piece, because even when we get into acting as an actor many young actors think that you have to say yes to everything mm -hmm. but you don't have to say yes to everything you could let your agent say you know what this this role doesn't resonate with me it's not something that i feel i want to bring forward in my art because you're the artist right so the first mm -hmm. thing that i'm looking for is does it resonate with me and then if it does not worrying about exactly what the script is or what do they think i should do I now want to create, what do I want to create for this? What do I want this character to be? And that's, that's the, becomes the exploration for me. Once I know I like something that makes half the battle go away for me to do it, because now I'm like, I'm interested to learn about this character. I'm interested to try to carve them out and create something because they're, they're intriguing to me for whatever that reason might be. So that's the, that's the biggest piece for me. Mm -hmm. Is so, like with being an actor, like especially like when you're starting out, like people are oftentimes saying like, "Oh, like I need to say yes to every role, so I can get big." Right. Like, but then like even with like saying yes to everything, you do not need to say yes to everything. Even no. though like it might be a rule, like you might think like you might think like, "Oh, with me just starting out, I have to say yes to everything," but that's not a rule. That's not a rule. Like you, if you like want to say yes to everything. Go ahead, say yes to everything. Like yes. Yes, at least you get more opportunities. You know what I mean? It's like it's not a bad thing to say yes to everything, but then like you need to kind of realize that like, is this role fit for me, my art, and what I do? Like, is this character right. or, or role fit for me and what I do? Is or is it kind of the, the best role for me, kind of to kind of use my time and energy to kind of do this project? That's just it. There's so many things like for me, I enjoy writing. I enjoy producing. I enjoy directing. I enjoy acting. I enjoy the corporate world. I enjoy speaking, doing podcast, right? Mm -hmm. So all of these things are things that interest me. And I want to make sure that I'm constantly pushing myself outside of my own boundaries. So if I'm just saying, if I've done something, sure, there are times I've done it again, but I'm trying to find something that takes me out of my comfort zone. So again, so I can explore, so I can grow, so I can always push my boundary to something new. If I've done it, I don't want to just get stuck in doing the same thing. And that's at least for me. That's my art. Now, somebody mm -hmm. else, their art may be, hey, I just want to work as much as possible. Mm -hmm. That's okay, too. Whatever, whatever makes you feel good and feel motivated, inspired to do what you want to do, I think that's the biggest takeaway. There is no rights and there's no wrongs. Mm -hmm. like it's just like when you like want to set your boundaries like sometimes you have to push yourself because like even though like you might not want to do this or you're like, kind of like a nervous wreck about it that's you, like, you don't know until you try if you don't like you if, if it makes you nervous like as more you do it the more less nervous you get like the like before I literally did a tv interview and I was like <laughs> this is making right. me a wreck like being yeah. in front of a camera like this wrecks me. Like, I don't know why I'm doing this. Like, this is like, I'm so used to doing interviews. It wasn't an interview part that, like, I don't mind. I'm so used to interviews. I'm like, I'm going to kill this. But, like, it's just like sometimes, like, when you are sitting in front of a camera, like a TV camera, and you're like, 
what is going on? Like, so it's like, when, like, sometimes if you're scared of being in front of a camera, you just have to do it so much that you just need time to be like, okay, well, I'm used to being in front of a camera. Like, this is like, as long as, like, if you're doing something like that, and you, like, you, as long as you push yourself, it's like, I did, like, when I push myself doing this inter TV interview, like, that's an example. Like, if you want to grow, as a person, like you do not know until at least you push yourself if you don't want to do it. At least like yeah. as long as you get the experience and grow as a person and grow your name, that's the best part of it. Absolutely. And there'll become points where, you know, you'll realize, you know what, I like to do this. I don't like to do that. That's okay. Right. But you have to try things. You're always going to be anxious. People ask me all the time. They say, so are you, what you're so confident and you're so, is it easy to get in front of the camera now after doing it for, you know, almost 40 years and it's still anxious. I still get anxious on every part. Mm -hmm. It's normal because you want, you have pride in what you want to do. And you and you care about it, right? So you're gonna have that's normal. But does it become debilitating so that you can't actually function? Or is it just can you shift that anxious energy into excitement, into uh using it for a way to stimulate yourself to say, okay, I'm gonna do something new and I'm gonna let it go where it where it, where it falls. At the end of the day, most things that we do in life aren't going to be so they're not gonna break us. It's mm -hmm. it's the it's when we go down a road that's compiled of doing a lot of bad choices that will break us. Mm -hmm. So I think if we we can stop ourselves way before that, if if we take advantage of knowing what what actually makes us excited and try to stay inside of that vein. Mm -hmm, exactly. And I want to ask you before we hop off is that like in 2015, like you found the indie actor studio, which you provide that some vital support to fellow actors, like. How do you support actors in a business with your studio? Yeah, so the biggest thing when I was uh, had the studio in place in helping actors from a business perspective is, you know, I would do a monthly I would do a monthly seminar every every month just to kind of have just the business, not even talk about the craft. Is you know, what did you need from headshots? Why do you take certain headshots and what kind of how do you set your resume up? How do you find an agent? When is it the right time to find an agent? That goes back into so many people want to go from A to Z, right? Before they actually go through each of the steps. And, and many times in the beginning, it's just like learn the craft. See if the work of what the craft is about makes sense for you. And then do you want to go into, are you more excited about commercials? Are you more excited about theater? Are you more excited about film or television? Because each one of them is a different art in itself. They're all acting, but they have different styles of the way that you should be approaching them. And so I think at the end of the day, that's the biggest piece is getting to understand somebody. Again, always asking them like, you know, how do you feel when you do this? Did it excite you? How did you prepare for it? Did that, did that, did that work for you? And the more you get to know them, you're able to help them understand if this is the right business for them. Because a lot of people want the business. They think they do. But really what they want is they want the end result of like, I want people to know who I am. I'm famous, right? Yeah. And that part is just so little in the craft itself because far and, there's a there's a there's amazing actors out there in the world and you may not get there. So you have to love the art. You have to love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like that's actually so true because like I know like with tons of people, especially like if they're an actor or in the, the entertainment business, is that like they oftentimes do it for the money or they just do it for fame. Right. But then like if you really want to be in that business, you just kind of need to love it. And basically, like if you really see yourself in, the, in like five years or ten years, like if you like sit back and think like, do I see myself as an actor? Like. And then you think like, oh, yeah, I'm not here for the money or the fame. I'm just here because I love it. That's the most important key to doing it. Is that like if you love it so much, you absolutely don't care. Like it's just right. like if you are um only care about the money or fame, like what are you doing? Like like if money and fame is not going to kind of get you anywhere. As long as because like if you only care about that, then like it's just kind of, you're kind of wasting your time. Of course, you know people. You make connections, but then like you need to find something that you will like. If you're not necessarily acting, but like if you find something other than entertainment, 
you're good. Like not necessarily fame and money. Because some people like sometimes like money and fame is not as good as it seems. Right. My mom used to always say when I was young, she said, Jonathan, whatever you do, just strive to become the best at it. When you become the best at it, the money will always follow. Mm-hmm. And she was great. So I never really got caught up in the money part of the business or anything in life. I've always, and I've done well. And the only reason why is because I've never put the focus in on the money. I've always trusted that that wise wisdom that she gave me of just being the best and enjoy the journey. And by doing that, the money always follows. It's, it always finds its way to you. Mm-hmm, for sure. And I um, want to thank you so much, Jonathan, for coming on the podcast. It means so much. I love time with you. You're amazing. I know we're running out of time real quick, but um, thank you so much for coming on. And thank you, everyone, for listening. And thank you so much, Jonathan, for coming on. You're such an inspiration. Well, thank you so much, Kylie. I appreciate it. And to everybody that listens in, I hope that you're all having a great year and a great day. And and hopefully this was fun information for you to learn. Absolutely. I learned so much from this episode. And thanks so much, Jonathan. And have a great rest of your day. Okay. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye.